Hello and welcome to a video of a pond with no fish in it. <laughs> I'm joking, there's loads of fish in it. I've just been going around with net, so they have uh, all gone to the bottom out of my way to make life difficult. So, as you know, I've been having problems with my filters. I've had new filters. I've had a long period of time without any filtration. I, I did get a lot of problems with my fish. But over the years, I've learned that the best, one of the best things to do for me personally is just sit back, relax, and let the fish be fish. If I manage to keep this water absolutely spot on, which I am doing at the minute with my new filtration system, I'm really pleased with that. Um, but if I manage to keep the water spot on, the fish will look after themselves, usually. I used to, if any trouble, I used to get them out straight away, I used to scrape them, I used to treat them and all this sort of thing. I've gone off that because I think it just stresses the fish out. So, with it recently, I've took a, a go at just letting them do their own thing. And it has worked. A lot of them have come out absolutely perfect. But this particular one fish, which I've caught, one of my big ones, this particular fish has been a pain. Um, so, for about six months now, she's had a little bit of sewer of some sort on her side, and it keeps changing and it's still red, you know what I mean? It's still not looking very nice. It's it's not really growing or anything like that. It looks as though it's getting better, then it doesn't get better and all this. So in this video, I'm gonna, obviously I've got her out. So I'm gonna get her out, I'm gonna anesthetize her, I'm gonna put iodine on her, and I'm gonna treat her, I'm gonna make sure there's any dead scales, I can take them out and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, we should be hopefully happy. And then afterwards, I might have a mess about with some chemicals in the pond, we'll see. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape her, but I'm going to do that off camera because I'm doing it on my own. And uh, scraping a fish on camera is just a nightmare anyway. So before I need to tie them, I scrape them before I need to tie them. Mostly because I don't know what the anaesthetic has effect on the parasites in the water. So I don't want the anaesthetic to end up killing the parasites and me thinking there's none on it. So if I don't, if I scrape them before I anaesthetize them, then I know for a fact that there's either nothing on it or there's something on it. And I've got a little air stone in here to keep her happy, it's just running off this uh, oxygen bottle. So it's a pure oxygen air stone, um, because I can. So I'll get on with the scrape and I'll come back to you in a minute. So this is one really big fishy, so this is going to be an absolute nightmare on my own. So I don't know why I'm filming this, the chances of me putting it in are very slim. So, if I have bothered to put this in because I don't look as stupid as I think I'm going to look, then uh, there we go. So what I want to do. Mm. Mm. So the water's a little bit chilly, so it's 14 degrees, so she should be a little bit happier, a bit easier to work with. Yeah. Oh, I've got some that. Yay. So, there we go. You see the scale. I'll put the cover slide on. Yeah, it's got a bit of mucus on that. Slide it to the middle. Cover slide. Oops, the main camera. Right, let's have a look, see what's on it. So there we go, that's the scrape done. Really good looking scrape to say how I did that uh, on my own. Um, it's come out really nice, so if there were anything on it, it would have been found. Um, I haven't found a single thing, absolutely spot on. It's such a relief uh, when you do a scrape and you find nothing. Um, oh, it's just brilliant. So, I'm pleased that there's nothing on it. I haven't got to worry about any parasites. So I'm filling up this measuring bowl and in it I'm putting some uh, coisidate, kasuri coisidate to uh, anesthetize the fish. Uh, it seems to be good stuff, not too bad. Um, not the best I've ever used, but the best I've ever used is not legal to purchase in shops, so uh, it is what it is. It's what you can get, and it works. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop her in here. You're supposed to put air stones in, I recommend putting an air stone in. Uh, just to mix it, get all mixed in well. 
Uh, in this case, I'm not going to do it. Um, I can't really put the oxygen air stone in because I think that'll just bring her back round and it, just, you know, so it needs to be a normal air stone, not a pure oxygen one. Um, so basically, when this is full, the point that I need, which is probably about there, really. Put that back in there. And uh, now that I can put the fish in here and uh, let her fall asleep and just make it easy on her, you know. Relax, I'll probably put that towel over the top so it's dark and that and let her fall asleep in her own, so let's go on with that. When you've got a fish this size, the only real way to move it like this is a sock net. It's worth the weight in gold, these things. 18 one end. Straight out the other end. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave her just there. Hopefully she gets comfortable. I don't want her to be stuck in it, but I don't want her splashing about in this tank. So I'm just going to wait until she slightly gets hold of some anaesthetic. There we go. I think she should be fine. So there's actually a lot of water in this tank. Uh, obviously it's a big fish, so you've got to put a good amount of water in. So what I'll do is I'll speed up this part of the video until she falls asleep. There we go, she's developing a little bit of a list. So she's uh, definitely been affected by it. And I'll show you. A little bit slow, so I'm, what I might do is put a little bit more in. Yeah, just a little cap full of. So, if they're still fighting it after a bit, you can always put a little extra in. So, I'm going to chuck it in over there like that. Mix it in so that the, mix it into the cloud and reach the fish. There we go. So, you can always add more, uh, is a good point to make. Um, if the, generally if they fall asleep really quick, get them out really quick, you'll be fine. If it takes them a little bit, a long time to fall asleep, it can sometimes take them a really long time to wake up as well. So if I get my thumb here and just run it under a gill plate, like that, so she's really, you know, see, she's swimming off now. She's not quite asleep. It's like... Basically, it's like putting your finger down your throat. It makes you want to get. And if you put your fingers in under the gill plate there, just gently, not poke your fingers in, because the gills are very delicate. Uh, she'll try to swim away, and then you'll know, you know that she is actually a bit too awake to get her out of water. So if I try it now, still a little bit too awake, see. But uh, apart from this sewer. It's not too bad, I can already see. So basically you feel along and you feel for dead scales and you can't pull a healthy scale out, it's almost impossible, they're really well in there. But a dead scale, if you run your fingers across like this and just feel here and this fish, there's a bit of a rough patch, a rough scale. So if I put my finger on that scale, like so it'll come straight out like that. So dead scale. Um, it's optional whether you remove these scales. So if you're a, if you're selling fish, you wouldn't want to remove them because it takes a long time for them to grow back, sort of thing. If you aren't selling fish, which I'm not, um, it's well, I'm not selling this one anyway. But it, it's it's better to take them out, I think, because once they start to die, you're not winning. There's not many, not many in this fish. I suspect what she's probably been doing is banging a scent on bottom drain sort of periodically and it's just never managing to heal. Let's check her. Yeah, she's banging out of sleep now. Look. Right, let's get her out. Right, so I've wrapped her in a towel, as you can see. It's the best thing to do. Bet I've not got the right way around. Oh yeah, it's not like me. Uh, so, you want to keep the red, keep the red out of the water, keep the red out of what am I talking about? Keep the red covered up so it's in the water of the towel, 
So the fish is nice and happy. Yeah, if I use these wet towels to cover her up like that, it's, they're also a little bit heavy. So if she does sort of jump about, they'll hold her back a little bit. So if you had some tweezers and stuff like that now, you know, I prefer to use my fingers and hands and run my fingers across it and find the dead scales. Uh, it's up to you. Tweezers also work really well. There we go, nice big dead scale there. Not too many, filling a couple. Get them out and then... Hopefully. Just sort of a lot of bruising just here. But she has been banging her sen and knocking her sen about. What I'm going to do is just get some towels. Get some paper towels, always a good thing to have. And dry off this bit, get it all nice and dry. See there's a lot of blood on it. Get it all nice and dry, clean. Off like so. And, uh, so much better. Right, what I want to do now is clean her up. So we're going to use a bit of Kasuri anti-back, uh, which is, show you, this is Kasuri anti-back, that's what it looks like now. This is the old one that I'm using. Um, so I'm going to spray a bit of this on, like so. Just rub it in. Might end up opening that new one, I think. This one's a bit Add it, lid off. There we go, right, some nice little bit of iodine in there, get it all rubbed in. So iodine is great for killing bacteria, and so you really want to get it in there, you want to make sure it's nice and rubbed in there, not to cause any extra damage to the fish, but make sure it gets in every little bit, and then you want to wipe it all off. So wipe it all off, make sure it's clean, and then do it again basically, which I'll show you. So different people use different things. Um, I like to clean with anything with iodine in it. And you crack, you know, you've done a good job if you clean it with iodine. You're not gonna have too many trouble then. So I'm just gonna wipe that off to make sure I've got all the nastiness out of there. And we can get a good look now. So you can clearly see quite a lot of bruising just here so she's been up to summer um, that's just keeping it you know keeping it worse it'd be right if she'd stop hitting bottom drains probably uh, so what we're gonna do now is get a load of this stuff on get all rubbed in you should wear gloves as well you know it's one of them things where do as I say and not as I do. Best to wear gloves. Ooh, that were a lot. There we go, that's a hell of a lot of stuff on there. Okay, also, one of the things you could do is scales that are a bit bad, like these ones here, just make sure it goes underneath them. Make sure it goes underneath your scales all nicely. It's been a good girl, it's not moved at all. If I get all this right nice and underneath scales, it should here look lovely. Right, next thing is a bit of a powder coat. So you can either put like a powder coat, Kashuri do one, you can get like beeswax, stuff like that. Um, and give it a good coating in this stuff. Like so. My camera died, so I'm just switching to my phone for a minute. So you can see that I've got a nice coating of this powder all over her. Let's get that like so. And let it dry off. So we go. I've ended up opening the new anti bike, so we'll see how we get on. Uh, just so I can spray it a bit finer like that. 
get a nice paint job if anyone wants the car painting. <laughs> Don't ask me to do it. And then basically blow on it, let it dry out nicely, like so. Right, one of the things I want to look at on this fish as well is her mouth. So, that's some tucker a little bit. Hello, little girl. Oh, she's still awake. So, the mouth's quite a difficult bit to do. Oops, see there. Try to keep the eyes closed. The mouth's quite a difficult bit to do. In fact, one sec, I'll just come back a second. See, so we go. I balled up a bit of tissue and stuffed it in her mouth. Um, there we go. And uh, this, I'm just going to put a little bit of this iodine on there. It's not going to get much. Don't need a ton. And uh, she should be happy enough with that. Uh, just to keep her happy, just get some underneath there. I don't want it in her mouth or anything like that. That's why you've got to put this right. You do not want iodine or any chemicals or anything getting in the mouth. There we go. Let her breathe again. In fact, let's have a look in her mouth while she's here. And... Uh, you can see that she's a pretty healthy fish, happy healthy fish. So we've dried up, dried off nicely, and uh, got all the points we needed to get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put her back in a bowl. So annoyingly, I'm using my phone, so I need to put this down. So I'll get back to you when she's sat in a bowl. So people ask me all the time how much do these fish weigh? Three point seven kilograms for a sixty-one centimeter fish. So there we go. I've sat her back in a tank and uh, put the pure oxygen on so it'll not take long for it to come back round as you can see because I've let it dry it's not at all dissolving in the water so it should be absolutely spot on and uh, as she gets that pure oxygen round uh, she'll really come round fairly quick there we go she's come back round now yeah. she's just uh, finding her feet so because I left her in there for quite a while uh, it did take her about five minutes to come round um, you will, to be honest, you will think you may have killed a fish um, at some point, especially little ones. It's really hard to tell if they're alive or not. <laughs> Don't think about that. Uh, I've never managed to kill a fish, and I've, you know, I've left them in for quite a while before, and they've been really hard in it. Um, or oh, put too much sedate solution in too little water, something like that, and it's really knocked them out. It's really difficult to kill a fish once you put them back in the pond, they're usually fine. How long can you keep them out of the water is another good question. It's also how long is you know a piece of string. It's it's up to you. Um, if it's a like like today, my, my pond water's 14 degrees and it's zero degrees outside. Um, I try not to do it outside because the cold shock would be a bit harsh on them. Um, so if if the, and then again as well if it's too hot, so if it's like a really hot summer's day, you know, don't have them out of the water too long and not do them any good. Basically you want to do it on a dullish day when it's not, you know, you're not really causing them much difference from being in the water to being out in it. And then they'll have a lot better time, a lot better experience. If you dry the fish out, um, then you might start to have trouble and stuff like that basically. But yeah, she's happy, ready to go back in main pond, so let's chuck her back in. So we go, let's pop her back in. Straight in sock, mate. Get on up with you. So there she is, looking really good, quite pleased with the progress. It's been a week, she's still got a slight bit of redness on her, but she's definitely looking a hell of a lot better. It doesn't look like a you know, bacteria infested mess, so that's a lot better. And uh, I'm just going to leave it, I'm not putting any chemicals in water, I haven't particularly done out but treat her. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it, see how she gets on and uh, hopefully it heals completely and we don't have any other problems. All the rest of the fish are doing quite well. Uh, the two others that I wanted to catch, um, I didn't bother, they don't, I don't think they needed it. This one here, um, he lost a couple of scales as you can see, um, but he's 
No, he's not sewer or anything like that, he's doing pretty well. He's one of my original fry, one of the first fry I ever got. Uh, from Cuttlebrook Goy Farm, and he's doing really happy. But yeah, for some reason he just lost a couple of scales and then that ripped. And uh, you can see that with black marks on his side. Uh, but yeah, he's quite a happy little fish. Yeah, look, there's the scales. If you like this video, then please like it. If you want to see more videos like this, then please feel free to subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, then please put them down below. And I shall see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.